Yeah, it's, it's always interesting to hear Harry Reid. You know, Harry Reid is a product of the Las Vegas mob. Here, here's a guy, and if people think that he uh, almost put his eye out because of a malfunctioning exercise machine, you know, I got a bridge in Brooklyn to sell him. Uh, th this guy got, got like a $25 million markup set aside uh, to take the old federal post office building in Vegas and turn it into a mob museum. Can you imagine a museum honoring the mafia, Bunky <laughs> Siegel and Meyer Lansky? And, you know, we know, we know uh, who, who's been buttering uh, Harry Reid's uh, bread for years. And, um, you know, I mean, uh, it's Nevada, of course. Uh, it's a wide open state. But, uh, uh, you know, you get what you pay for. People paid for Harry Reid and they got what they expected. They got a they got a mobbed up senator to help run a mobbed up state. And people finally said no to him, which we admire. Uh, what is the word from your investigative uh, repertoire of what really happened to Reid? Well, I, I talked to people and, you know, of course, this happened while he was uh, out in Nevada, that he uh, he may have gotten into a, a, you know, a big fist fight with somebody. Some, somebody sent him a message. He, he didn't have the right answer, as we used to say. Uh, somebody didn't have the right answer up in Philadelphia. You know, they got they got a black guy. Uh, and that's not, I think that's probably what happened. I think the guy so mobbed up, he, he got a little. Uh, like Donnie Brasco action going on there. Uh, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, the, what was the word on Bush? You know, obviously he kept falling down and getting all beaten up. He claimed he yeah, choked was, on a pretzel. Well, the, 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 that's interesting, the pretzel thing. And I, I had that confirmed later by somebody pretty high up uh, in, in government. Uh, he actually was drunk. Uh, he was watching a football game. He was drinking Jim Beam and, and chasing it with uh, uh, Lone Star beer. Uh, now, there's a guy that wasn't supposed to be drinking anymore, re re you know, recovering out. And why is he drinking crap beer and drinking crap whiskey? I, I, I mean, yeah. with all that money, he ought to be drinking. Well, anyway, sorry, go ahead. He, he liked it. It was, I guess, something he had been doing his whole life or, you know, his, he, he and his buddies used to do it when they were in the fraternity. But, yeah, uh, but he passed out. He hit the coffee table in the, in the residential quarters of the White House. Uh uh, probably not the first time. It's remember we had we had Bill Clinton used to walk out with marks on his forehead. And then one time he said he walked into a door. Actually, he walked into an ashtray that had been thrown at him by Hillary Clinton. I got that from Secret Service agents, uh, presidential security. Well, let me raise okay. this. I, I, obviously, you've got a lot of Secret Service connections and stuff. I think they're persecuting him because they know how close they are to the president. Obviously, no agency's perfect, but one drunk driving deal, some hookers. I mean, big deal compared to other agencies. I, I keep getting from high-level sources that Obama is just whacked out beyond belief and is actually, I mean, we talked about earlier practicing Muslim. Do you have any intel on that? Well, I, what I understand is, and I think the pr biggest problem with the Secret Service is when they put him par uh, made him part of Homeland Security. They should have left him separate as part of the Treasury Department because there was always that esprit de corps. Now they're like part of that big, you know, American version of the KGB, a huge bureaucracy. But I, I've, what I've heard is that Obama is incredibly disengaged from a lot of day-to-day -day events. Uh, uh, when he does uh, get on the Internet or uses his uh, you know, classified, secure BlackBerry, he's doing a lot of vanity searches to see what people are saying about him, uh, uh, how, how the press is covering him. But other than that, I understand ESPN is found uh, on TV more often in the uh, private quarters of the White House than, you know, C, uh, CNN or MSNBC. Well, he admits that. And I mean, what about yeah. him like being on reality TV shows and saying, I'm going to watch Star Wars this weekend? I mean, while all these wars are going on, I mean, even liberals like David Spader coming out and saying, hey, you need to be on reality TV a little bit less. We got five clips here. I want to start going to them. I, I didn't get the list, guys. So I'll just I'll just go to the first uh, clip. Uh, uh, let's play this first clip from Obama's press conference earlier where he fake cried. I mean, talk about going all out to get our guns. That's trying to mobilize the hordes of his disenfranchised idiot supporters to help complete our journey to slavery. Here it is. Anybody in the business of selling firearms must get a license and conduct background checks or be subject to criminal prosecutions.
That means transferring guns to your family. It doesn't matter whether you're doing it over the internet or at a it's gun National show. registration. It's not where you do it, but what you do. Not where you do it, what you do. Okay, so that's a national registration database. That's the next step to, to taking our guns. They admit it. We have the Austin Pro Team mayor saying once we register, we confiscate and laughing. So, I mean, they tell us they're coming, period. This is a guy with Secret Service guarding him. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the next clip. This is uh, expanding background checks. That means putting psychologicals, BS, no fly list, just made up crap. No judge, no jury. Here it is. We're also expanding background checks to cover violent criminals who try to buy some of the most dangerous firearms by hiding behind trusts and corporations. Unless they're and Syrian refugees. Cutouts. You can't buy through, you have to buy the gun and put it to trust. You don't We're also like taking steps to make the background check system more efficient. Like the thousands of Syrian refugees you just let go. Of Jim Comey and the FBI. Or the air flight with 150 people from Mexico you just let go through customs. Uh, Brandon, the uh, AF, uh, ATF, ATF, you drug addict. We're going to hire more folks to process applications faster. What a weirdo. Like, I don't care he goes to gay bathhouses. I don't care he's a drug addict, uses cocaine, and admits it. But then he's a radical Muslim on top of it, where they chop your head off for that? What a freak! Like, you know, he's got, like, tranny nannies when he's a kid, and he uh, wants to chop heads off? I mean, he's just a freak! I'm sorry, folks, I'm flipping out. Wayne, we're going to break. We're going to come back with more of these clips. But what do you make of this big gun grab? Well, you know, anytime the government says we're... we're here to help you, you know, watch out, especially big programs like he's uh, doing for executive orders. I want to see where you think this is all going straight ahead, Wayne. Final segment, WayneMadsonReport.com. You can read his stuff every day at InfoWars.com. He's an amazing investigative journalist. I'm Alex Jones, and I'm upset, and I'm ringing the alarm bell like Paul Revere. Join us, folks. We need your help. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. So let's walk through the clips here. Anyone selling a firearm must get a license. That means transferring. That means giving of 22 to your grandson. That's to track all guns, make it felonies, start investigations claiming guns were transferred wrong. It's a license to harass the daylights out of the Second Amendment and register them nationally, Katie, bar the door. Massive assault we thought would come months later because the big assault's that it's executive orders outside of law. Never forget that. It's all completely illegal. Expound background checks. That means put in more stuff not in the Gun Control Act or not on the Knicks uh, Brady bill that's even been overturned, but they don't care. They just keep doing it. Um, They're just going to come after the guns by adding psychologicals, you name it, no fly list. No one knows why you're on it. Members of Congress are on it. Members of Homeland Security, you just, you just can't have a gun. Boost gun safety technology. That's how Smith & Wesson and everybody else basically is leaving California with micro stamping on each cap uh, when uh, you fire it, uh, uh, on 20-foot drop test, it's just all this stuff to ban guns with regulations outside of law, more criminal activity. Uh, and then, of course, we are only advanced country on Earth with frequent violent gun crimes. Totally false, total lie. Gun crime has dropped 60-plus percent in the last 20 years. And then we've got Obama's cry moment. Let's go to boost gun safety. That means sabotage and have outside-of-law regulations to shut down gun manufacturers and render your gun you own at home illegal. First, they make new ones have the micro stamp and all this other stuff. Then they ban the others. That's been done in other countries. They're following an enemy blueprint that's been successful. But again, we have the enemy blueprint. Here it is. We're going to boost gun safety technology. Now, today, many gun injuries and deaths are the result of legal guns that were stolen or misused or discharged accidentally. In 2013 alone, more than 500 people lost their lives to gun accidents, and that includes 30 children younger than five years so, old. So now they're going to be biometric and not work. Now, in the greatest, most technologically advanced nation on Earth, there is no reason for this. So this is we smart grid where they, technologies where they technologically bring in, 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 in the gun we culture. Set it up so you can't unlock your phone unless you got the right fingerprint. So you smart grid in your car, your phone, your gun, everything controlled. Why can't we do the same thing for our guns? Smart guns, which means third phones. All right, that's enough. Let's go to Wayne Madsen. Wayne, um, this is bold. I mean, just the executive action level outside of law. What's your view on this? Well, I just wonder if the, the, this uh, rule will apply to the CIA, which takes advantage of the fact that the U.S. is the largest manufacturer of small arms on the planet to export weapons to these jihadists, for example, fighting against oh. Assad in Syria, uh, the oh. jihadists fighting against the government in Baghdad, 
which we supposedly supported. So are, are all these jihadists, uh, these weapons exported to the jihadists, uh, uh, John Brennan's uh, brigades over in all these countries, are they going to have all this smart technology? No, nah, you know. I'd like to. I'd like to see the the, the details of this proposal. I Wayne, have, you're a genius. I, I want to headline at Infowars.com with this video tomorrow morning, and other people can write the story too. I don't care. We're here to fight tyranny, not get scoops. Headline: Expert put biometric controls on guns shipped to Middle East so Al Qaeda can't use them. Of course, you know, put biometric controls or smart controls on guns you're shipping to jihadis. Or how about he just not ship them to the jihadis, Wayne? Exactly. Well, that would be a better idea, but uh, let's see if this is a uh, policy of his is going to be uniform across the board, because certainly uh, the ISIS boys, the, the Al Qaeda boys over there, they don't really care about killing kids. They've killed kids, uh, women, pregnant women. Uh, let's see if they're going to have to have biometric controls that they can only. That's right. They, they've guns. killed an estimated 300,000 people in Syria, hundreds of thousands in Libya, tens of thousands in Egypt. Uh, though we've got a few thousand gun deaths here that are accidental or whatever a year. I mean, how about Obama make a big deal about what his jihad forces did? That's a great point. Right. Is he going to cry about, about that, Wayne? Yeah, how about smart knives? Because we have people running around Europe now, you know, stabbing people. So I think... Yeah, maybe, yeah. Yeah. Let's skip the one clip, absolutely. Uh, and let's play Obama's cry moment as we go out to break here. Let, let's actually play with audio the cry moment, Wayne. Here it is. All right, to peaceful assembly. That right was robbed from moviegoers in Aurora and Lafayette. Our unalienable right to life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness, those rights were stripped from college kids in Blacksburg and Santa Barbara. When one of your lined up toy drug heads went crazy. Yeah, evil's in the world, punk. You don't take your people's guns to stop it. And from first graders. Gun crimes down. Gun crimes down starts crying. I want to get their guns. I want to dominate them. I want to do whatever I want. My jihad forces want to chop your heads off Obama's thing. I hate this country. I must destroy it. I only got one year to destroy it. Ah, ah, ah. I start crying. Oh, I hate America. From every family oh, I will break never them. Imagined that their love I will break them. Taken. I will get their guns. Ah, I will get them. I will dominate. Oh, I'm going to cry. They cry. Got to force it. There's no tears. He touches his eye. Oh, my gosh. You couldn't get a job at the school play.